Hello, everyone, and welcome to One Civil Law, where we learn through the misfortunes of others. If you're enjoying our legal education content, please remember to subscribe. It helps our channel grow. For today's case, we're dealing with an asylum claim of an illegal immigrant and whether or not alleged prior bad acts in his former home country constitute reasons to deny his asylum and deport him. This is the case of Barahana versus the Attorney General of the United States. In this case, Mr. Barahana um, came to the United States illegally, and at some point later, he applied for asylum by claiming that he was under threat from MS-13. However, it appears that he might have been involved with MS-13 in the gang in some way, and he might have participated in illegal conduct. So does that prevent him from seeking asylum, and will he be deported? Let's get started with this. Barahana is a native and citizen of El Salvador, who entered the United States illegally in December of 2012. His wife, Cecilia, came to the United States a few years later, and she was granted asylum. In 2018, Cecilia filed a form for petitioning on Barahana's behalf. In reviewing the asylum petition, agents with Homeland Security, Citizenship, Immigration Services performed a standard check and discovered an Interpol red notice from July of 2018 requesting Barahana's extradition as a fugitive sought for criminal prosecution in El Salvador. The underlying alleged crime was for participation in an illicit gathering in violation of the Salvadorian law. The red notice indicated that, according to the investigation conducted in 2010, Barahana was identified by an informant to be a gatilero, or hitman, for the, Mar for the MS-13 criminal organization. Arrest warrant was issued for him in 2016. Okay, so we've got these, these people who have come to the United States illegally from Salvador. Wife comes here first. She gra she's granted asylum. Now she's filing an asylum request for her husband. And we do a routine check and we discover that he's in Interpol. So that gets our attention real fast. And we're taking a look at this and it's like, yeah, okay, he's involved in an illicit gathering. What does that mean exactly? I don't know. But we also have suspicion that he's a hitman for the gang. So there's that. And maybe we shouldn't admit this guy to the United States. So what happens next? Immigration agents took Barahana into custody. Because Barahama was determined to be a danger to the security of the United States, his asylum petition was denied. In 2019, Barahana was charged with being removable under the Immigration Act as an alien present in the United States without having been admitted or being paroled. In 2019, Barahana appeared before an immigration judge and after conceding his removability, requested asylum, withholding of removal, and protection under the Convention Against Torture based on his fear of the MS-13 gang in El Salvador. In 2019, the immigration judge denied Barahana's application for relief and protection from removal based on finding that serious reasons exist to believe Barahana committed serious non-political crimes outside the United States. The immigration judge also found it was not more likely than not that Barahana would be tortured in El Salvador. So the immigration judge wasn't buying a whole bunch of this. Okay, now having paid attention to the facts as laid out by the United States government, we have to look at the law. So how do we evaluate this in terms of an asylum claim versus other kinds of claims? How do we determine if it's a genuine threat? How do we determine if he's a violent threat? What is the standards for review on this case? So let's take a look at the law. We review decisions of immigration on questions of law from the first instance and accord substantial deference to interpretation of the law and any agency regulations. A non-citizen may apply for asylum by establishing their eligibility as a refugee who was unable or unwilling to return to their home country because of persecution or a well-founded fear of persecution on an account of race, religion, nationality, member in a particular social group, or a political opinion. However, an applicant is ineligible for asylum or withholding of removal for several reasons, including where there are serious reasons for believing the alien has committed a serious non-political crime outside the United States prior to his arrival in the United States. As the Bureau explained, and the parties agree here, the serious reason for believing standard is equivalent to probable cause. Okay, so one of the things that the U.S. is not completely an idiot about on this thing is they don't look to any kind of political crimes. 
because we don't really believe in that concept in the United States. So if what you were charged with slash what you're convicted of is a political crime, we're going to ignore it because we can, because we're a sovereign state and we don't have to pay attention to those things. So the United States will look and see, among other things, whether or not the crime you did was a non-political crime or a political crime. If it's a political crime because the government just doesn't like you because of you doing things the government doesn't like, then, you know, the United States doesn't care. If, however, it's being a hitman for a gang, the United States cares quite a bit more. So which of these two categories are we in? The law makes clear that Barhana carries the initial burden to establish whether he satisfies the eligibility requirements to obtain asylum relief or relief from removal. But Homeland Security has the burden to show that one or more of the mandatory bars to relief exist, such as the crime bar that's at issue here. So he, the Barhana has to prove why he's eligible in the first instance because of he's under threat. And then DHS has to prove why he's barred by some other statute. The statutory framework and relevant case law direct us to require something more than some evidence in order to meet the probable cause standard that is required for serious reason believing, because both parties agreed that's the same thing. So a serious reason for believing is equivalent to probable cause. So they're saying, do, do they have probable cause? The parties do not cite, and we could not find, a case in which a court has found that a red notice alone is sufficient to meet the standard. That seems slightly strange. I would think that a red notice would be probable cause to believe that to be true, but apparently there's not a case that says that. Also complicating the analysis in this case is whether or not the charges giving rise to the red notice have been dismissed. Barahana submitted evidence the charge had been dismissed. The Bureau did not seek time to review this. So therefore they erred in the case when they failed to make probable cause finding particularly light of the dispute regarding the underlying criminal charges that gave rise to the red notice. So one of the issues at pet play here is apparently whether or not these charges exist, whether or not the warrant exists. So Barahana said this doesn't exist, and Homeland Security, in its infinite wisdom, didn't seek any time or conduct any investigation to figure out whether or not that's true. Uh, that's, that's a thing that they just neglected to do for some reason. And so the court's like, yeah, um... We don't know that a red notice by itself is sufficient, and also this particular red notice might not be sufficient because his crimes might have been dismissed because he presented some evidence that they were, and you didn't, like, rebut that anyway. So we, ha we have our doubts that you were able to get to probable cause in this particular situation. Finally, Barahana argues the crimes charged in El Salvador do not meet the definition of a serious non-political crime. The evaluation of a serious non-political crime is conducted on a case-by-case -case basis concerning the facts and circumstances presented. Barahana was charged with illicit gathering, a violation of the Salvadorian Penal Code related to events involving MS-13. The immigration judge reviewed the charge and determined the crime also involved a substantial risk of violence and harm to a person. The immigration judge also noted the lack of any political character and indeed Barahana conceded that it was non-political. Because the Bureau failed to make a probable cause finding to support the mandatory bar, we reverse and remand for further proceedings consistent with this opinion. So that brings us to the end of our discussion of Barahana versus the Attorney General of the United States. In this case, we learned that Mr. Barahana was an illegal immigrant. His wife, who had already been granted asylum status, applied for asylum for him. But there was a problem. He had a red flag alert from Interpol saying that he was being charged with an illicit gathering under El Salvador's law. However, the Bureau didn't do their due, due diligence here because Mr. Barahana said the charges were dismissed and present some evidence to that effect, and Homeland Security didn't do anything to follow up to determine whether or not that was true. So they are sending it back to the immigration judges for another look at this, gather more evidence, at least for the moment that brings us to the end of the discussion of this case.